Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Oh, oh okay. Uh, today, Intel, uh, they've announced the um, Core i9-14900K. Sorry, the Core i9-14900KS. Yeah, I think that's right. The KS. Yeah, the S stands for... Don't know. Um, it's, it's. I think it's very slightly faster than the fourteen nine hundred K. It's really pretty much the same. Slightly higher core frequencies. Uh, um, costs a lot more. Yeah, that's the um, that's the fourteen nine hundred K S. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their CryoSheet Graphene Thermal Pads, which are an excellent alternative to thermal pastes. They offer very high thermal conductivity with no liquid components, so they can't dry out and therefore don't degrade over time like pastes and even liquid metals. CryoSheet is very easy to use, it's extremely durable, and is available in a range of sizes to suit most applications. I've personally done some high-end GPU testing with CryoSheet, and the results were impressive, very similar in fact to that of liquid metal, but without the mess, and of course, no risk of drying out. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Um, if we uh, head to the specification sheet Intel provided me and look at the um, the 14900K versus the 14900KS, we see, um, yeah, look, not, not a whole lot here. We've got the KS model with a new maximum clock speed of 6.2 gigahertz up from 6 gigahertz, though that is only thermal velocity boost, meaning the frequency on the fastest few P cores under ideal thermal conditions. The regular Turbo Boost 3.0 clock is also up 100 megahertz, as is the E core boost frequency. And uh, yeah, to accommodate this, the base power rating has increased from 125 to 150 watts, though the maximum turbo power of 253 watts remains. Uh, everything else, pretty much identical to the 14900K. It's the same 24 core design with 8P cores and 16E cores. Architecture is the same, L3 cache is the same, L2 cache. Yeah, you guessed it, the same, base frequencies, unchanged, memory specifications, identical. It's fundamentally the same processor, except in ideal situations, it can clock about 3% higher, and it's likely using better binned silicon. Of course, the 14900K itself is basically just a 13900KS, which is basically just a 13900K. So the new 14900KS model is Intel's fourth flagship fastest ever processor, or whatever, to use uh, basically the same silicon. The 13900K started out with a maximum P-core frequency of 5.8 GHz. That jumped to 6 GHz for the 13900KS and 14900K and now it's 6.2 gigahertz. So in total, just 400 megahertz of increases across those four products, or just 200 megahertz looking at Intel's most basic turbo spec, and just 100 megahertz on the E-cores. Very exciting stuff. Now, if you were expecting this new CPU with a 3% higher clock speed to cost just 3% more than the 14900K, you would be badly mistaken. Like other Intel KS models, the 14900KS comes at a huge premium. Intel says this new part, which is going on sale today, will cost a whopping $700 US, with an RCP in the spec sheet of $690. Right now, you can pick up a Core i9-14900K from Newegg for $581, making the KS variant 20% more expensive. Yikes. And of course, pricing gets even worse because as we all know, the 14900KS is very similar to a 13900K, which can currently be purchased for as little as $523. So buyers will be effectively paying 34% more for the same thing, just clocked slightly higher and with a slightly better bin. We already know from our testing that the 14900K is about 2% faster than the 13900K from its 3% frequency increase, so we're expecting something similar again. Steve is currently on holiday, so he hasn't had time to test the 14900KS, and I sure as hell wasn't going to interrupt his much-needed break to get him to test a CPU that is probably going to end up 2% faster while costing substantially more. In fact, 
if I called an emergency meeting to discuss this product, Steve would probably fly home to murder me and hide my body in the outback. Now, none of this is especially new. Uh, well, not the murdering part, the CPU. This isn't the first time Intel have released a KS processor. They did so with the 9900KS, 12900KS, and 13900KS. Same thing each time, a re-release of the silicon with a small frequency increase and a much higher price tag. In Steve's 13900KS review, he said the CPU made no sense and was a ripoff. And in the 12900KS review, he said it was a dumb product for people with more money than sense. Rave reviews there from the old man, and I reckon I'll probably get away with calling him that because he probably won't watch this video. As part of Intel's slide deck they provided to us for the 14900KS, there are a few rather questionable performance slides. For example, we have this one comparing the 14900KS with the 13900KS, a CPU that's very similar to the 14900K. Across the seven games shown, on average Intel are claiming a 7% performance increase from the new 14900KS. Except there's a very important footnote here. Intel's application optimization feature was enabled on the 14900KS, implying this feature was not enabled on the 13900KS, and indeed there's no mention it was in the additional footnotes. Along with the 14900KS, Intel are updating the list of APO games to include 14 titles, 12 of which are new, although some of them have been announced previously. If we cross-reference this list with the previous performance slide, we see that 5 of the 7 titles are APO games, the outliers being Starfield with just a 3% performance improvement and League of Legends with a 5% improvement. Intel claims that Metro Exodus sees an 11% gain from APO alone, suggesting the 15% gain seen here is largely from that feature instead of raw performance. This is important to note because Intel have said that APO is coming to 12th and 13th gen processors, which would include the 13900KS. So if the 14900KS is tested with APO on, and the 13900KS is with APO off, that may not be reflective of real world differences with both CPUs using APO. On top of this, Intel spends a lot of their slide deck comparing the 14900KS to the 7950X3D in games, rather than the 7800X3D that they admit is the fastest Ryzen processor for gaming. This chart, for example, shows the 14900KS as being 4% faster than the 7950X3D on average across 18 games, but in a follow-up slide they actually admit the 7800X3D is 1.4% faster in their testing. Back when we tested the 7800X3D versus the 14900K in 21 games, we found that the Ryzen processor is 5% faster on average, so the 14900KS closing that gap slightly makes sense, though it's unlikely to be outright fastest. Of course, Intel are comparing the 7950X3D and 14900KS because they are much closer in price, though the 7950X3D is currently available for $590, which is still 15% cheaper than the 14900KS. The 7950X3D is also the closer match for productivity workloads, where generally Intel's Core i9 processors are strong in due to their high core count. Intel are claiming a 10% average performance advantage to the 14900KS over the 7950X, though the 7950X is just $550, making the 14900KS 27% more expensive. These are also just first party benchmarks and should be taken with a grain of salt. On top of this, Intel are claiming better frame consistency with the 14900KS, which they are measuring using the 99th percentile frame time. They show the 14900KS 2.7% ahead of the 7800X3D on average here, though it's unclear why the game selection has reduced from 9 games to 7 games compared to their average performance comparison previously. Possibly some cherry picking there. In any case, I mean, what more can you say about the 14900KS? It's not a very exciting processor. Most people probably shouldn't buy one. It might offer something slightly better for extreme overclockers, taking out a small amount of guesswork regarding CPU quality and binning, but for everyday consumers, it makes little to no sense. This might have been somewhat exciting if it was able to retake the overall gaming performance crown from AMD's Ryzen 7 7800X3D, even if it was just a slim lead for record purposes rather than providing excellent value for consumers. But even that seems unlikely, as Intel's first party benchmarks show the 7800X3D generally ahead, and based on our benchmarks, the gap between the 7800X3D and 14900K is going to be slightly too large to close with a best case 3 percent frequency bump. There's really nothing more to say here, so that's it for this video, just looking at the news 
of Intel's Core i9-14900KS processor. If you're interested in more testing and news videos from us here at Hardware Unboxed, hopefully ones where I'm a bit more awake for them, then please do consider subscribing and supporting the channel via our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.